Hey, hello everybody, it's Lorraine Mortensen from Mortensen Photography and today I wanted to talk a little bit more about how to make yourself look good on camera when you're doing lots of video calls, things like Zoom and Skype and FaceTime. So last time I talked a little bit about how to look good on camera during the daytime using natural light and using your, tele your, your cell phone or a laptop so that you can move around and find really great natural light. But today I want to address um, something else because this is a situation a lot of us find ourselves in. So we're having to do um, video calls or film ourselves at night in the evening when it's dark and there's not a lot of natural light to be found or we're having to be in a room on our desktop again with a badly lit room. So what do you do in those situations? So um, I've had to I've had to deal with those things myself so I've had to try a lot of different things and come up with some things to, for, to help myself. So I thought I'd share them with you because um, I think there, it's pretty common for us to run into that situation, those situations. So, um, so I went downstairs, I'm sitting downstairs in my basement right now and there's not a lot of natural light that comes in here. It is during the daytime so I shut my curtains and my blinds but, um, and I turned on all my room lights but I do have a special piece of equipment on at, right now, so I look, um, so you can see me clearly right now while I'm explaining to you, but I'm going to shut it off, and I'm going to show you what it would actually look like if I was just filming with my room lights on in a dark, darkish sort of basement room. So I'm going to shut my light off, and here's what it actually looks like. So as you can see, I've got this bright light behind me, it's yellow and I've also got pot lights in my ceiling from above and it's throwing light down this way and it's casting all kinds of yucky shadows on my face. You know, you've got dark circles under my eyes, I've got shadows from my hair and it's super unflattering. And you know, this is not the best. I mean, at least I'm bright enough that you can see me because sometimes people who are down in a, a darker room um, you can't even see them, it's very dark. So this is not the ideal situation. I'm just gonna move around a tiny bit here just to show you you know, some other things you might want to avoid. Like I already mentioned, I have these pot lights. I'm gonna go stand directly under one so you can even see more. Like, look what it does. Like, it makes my eyes black, I, I can't even see them. So you definitely want to avoid overhead lights. You want to avoid um, bright lights behind you because they can make your face all milky looking. They're super distracting too, so you don't want that. You don't want lights above your head, glowing, things like that. It, it, again, it's really distracting. It doesn't do anything for you. It looks like you're coming down from outer space or something. It's not very flattering. So, um, I'm gonna put this one back on and so you can see the difference. Look at that. Night and day difference. And again, the whole reason why you want to be well lit is so that you can make that connection with the people that you're talking to on the other end or in your videos. So I have a couple tips and tricks for what to do in this situation. And I'm going to share them with you right now, so just hold on tight. Okay, so let's say you're stuck in the basement or in your office that has really terrible light and you need to do a Zoom call and um, you don't know how to light your face. So here's the easiest and least expensive way to go about it. Right now I am sitting out um, on my couch and I have my computer up on a box so I can have it at eye level. And I have placed a lamp directly behind my phone or my computer and it is I take the, I took the shade off so it's a bare bulb and I just turned it on and it instantly evened out the light on my face. You can see it's bright, well lit. Now, you know, it's these types of lights are not may not be powerful enough like if you've got some really nasty overhead shadows going on or really bright lights behind you it may not be enough, but it's better than nothing and this is where I would start. If you want some more sophisticated options, hang on, I'll just show you a few of those as well. But um, let me show you this behind the scenes so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the behind the scenes setup of what I was just showing you. I was sitting on the couch and I was directly facing my laptop, which you can see there, 
on the blue box so that it's raised up to my eye level. And what I have is that uh, a table lamp, just a normal table lamp from my living room. I took the lampshade off, as you can see there, and so it's just the bare bulb shining, and it is directly behind the laptop. So I was facing it straight on, just like I would have faced my window during the daytime if I was in my living room upstairs. And that gives you um, even lighting all across your face. Um, the only thing I would recommend is if you're finding that the light still looks pretty yellow, you might want to get a light with a, a light bulb that's daylight balanced or of just a cooler white, and that should help. So the most important thing here, though, is to make sure you're facing it straight on, just like you would a window. Okay, so here's another option that you could try if you don't want to use a tabletop lamp. This is the first thing that I purchased after I realized I needed help with lighting. This is the light um, from a tabletop ring light. So this ring light is, um, it, it uh, has a telescoping stand on it. So it has legs and a stand, I'll show you in a minute. Um, and it plugs into my laptop, so that's where it gets its power. And I can um, have it, again, directly on the table behind my laptop so that it's lighting up my face from the front and I can adjust it to uh, different brightness levels and I can also adjust it to be cooler or warmer whatever I prefer as you can see this one this is as bright as it gets so it's not super bright but again it's better than nothing and where I often use this one is by my desktop computer in my office because I don't get very great natural light there and so it's, I'm able to stick it on my desk um, because my desk is up against a wall. And, and with an, I have another option that I'm gonna show you, but, but that one doesn't work on my desk in my office. This one does. So this is a great option. And the other reason this one is a good choice is if you ever have to travel and you're doing a lot of Zoom meetings, like say you're stuck in a hotel and it's evening or you don't have a lot of natural light, this would be good. You can pack it and take it with you and you can um, use it on the go. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a behind the scenes with this one so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so there you can see my setup with my tabletop ring light. You can see it has legs, that it's, it um, has a stand, and it, the um, stand actually can go up and down. It's telescoping, so you can make it higher or lower depending on what you need. And again, there you can see my laptop is on a box. Now, I wanna talk about that for a minute because I have not explained what I'm doing there. Earlier in my last video, I explained how you wanna have your um, phone or your computer at eye level because you don't wanna be taking pictures from below or way too high above. So I just use this plastic box that I have. It's just an Ikea box, but you can really use anything like um, a cardboard box or even a stack of books whatever you've got around to raise that up a bit. Sometimes I even stand it on a stool or a chair, depending on where I'm standing for my video. Anyway, the um, ring light plugs into my laptop, so that makes it really handy to uh, have it powered without cords all over the place and plugins and such. So that's a really great beginner option. It's an inexpensive ring light, and um, I will put a link to show you where you can get it. And as another option, I highly recommend getting yourself a standing ring light. This, when I purchased my standing ring light, it was like a total game changer. I, I uh, was able to use my phone and my laptop for video calls and videos in all kinds of different situations where I hadn't been able to use it before. Again, it, it's a standing ring light, so you can't really put it on your desk, but Honestly, I do most of my filming on my phone, and so it's it works great for that. And look how bright my face is, evenly lit. It's the strongest of all the lights that I've recommended today. So um, if you're gonna be doing, like if you're regularly doing Zoom calls for work, or you know meetings or whatever, and, or you're doing a lot of social media filming of any kind, I would highly recommend that you invest in a standing ring light. It, they're not that expensive, and you will certainly get your money's worth out of them. Like I said, we use ours. I use it all the time. My daughter uses it. We use it because both of us have businesses on social media, and it's just become an indispensable tool. So um, I will show you behind the scenes of what this looks like as well. Hang on. Okay, and here you can see my standing ring light from behind the scenes. 
if you notice it's got um, legs and it's on a big tall stand that you can raise or lower which is really great if you want to do videos while you're standing up I can move this uh, ring light all around my house and it's not confined to my tabletop so any place I want to take it I typically don't use it in this situation with the laptop because I'm going to show you in a minute but this ring light actually has a built-in phone holder and so when I'm using my standing ring light, I mostly use it with my phone to film. Um, and as you'll notice, it is the brightest of all the lights I've had, and that's really great. Um, it also is able to dim if you want, um, but it's really important to have um, a good powerful light because in some situations it's just too dark. You know, the little tabletop ring light was not bright enough really for down here. Let me show you how the um, phone holder works. pull it around here so there you can see the phone holder you can flip it to be vertical or horizontal um, when I first purchased ring lights or, or phone holders it was um, became uh, pretty clear pretty quickly that I needed one that turned you know if you're filming for let's say you're filming and you want to do something for Instagram a lot of times it's vertical um, but yet Facebook or like other calls that you're doing might be horizontal might be a better choice. So it's really nice to have that option. So I highly recommend that was a special feature I had to add on with this ring light. But um, a standing ring light like this is not very expensive. And honestly, if you're doing a lot of Zoom meetings or a lot of filming, um, it is definitely worth having and spending the money on you will not regret it and uh, we've certainly used used it enough to make it pay for itself already so highly recommended okay and I just want to show you this one last piece of equipment that has really become indispensable for me when I'm doing um, filming or zoom or Skype calls or even just taking photos this is a selfie stick and what's so great about this selfie stick is it's got a couple extra features that have been really helpful. So if you'll notice, it's got legs. They fold up so you don't have to use them with legs, but if you do need to put your selfie stick down and use it as a little mini tripod, it has that option. And honestly, this is how I use it most of the time. It's been fantastic. I can stand that um, just on a table like you see to help have my phone at eye level if I'm taking pictures or filming or put it on a box or even on a chair sometimes. And the telescoping handle, I mean, that's obviously you know for selfies a selfie stick has that sliding handle so you can get it farther away from you but you know that makes it really great if you want to raise it and lower it as in a tripod situation the other thing that this selfie stick has that is not typical is a rotating head again so you can do vertical or horizontal pictures and again I have found that that is really really important so if you can choose that, in, if you're buying a selfie stick and you have that option, definitely go with the rotating head. So this is, um, again, the last piece of equipment that I would highly recommend. And um, I will also put a link to it so you can see which one this is. Okay, so I have one more quick tip for you here today. Um, in case you don't have a selfie stick and you need something like right now, my daughter Hannah is going to help um, demonstrate this for us. She's got a pop socket on the back of her phone. A lot of people have these, so if you have one, you're in luck. Because when we're wanting to do a call on our phone, or with our phone, and I, I'm suggesting that you have it at eye level, um, it gets a little tiring if you're on the phone for an hour. You don't want to hold it up, like, with your hands the whole time, right? So just pop open your pop socket and put um, a coffee cup up on top of a box, and then just hook it on like that. And you can uh, be hands-free and have it raised up to the right angle. Okay, so I just wanna give you a couple last minute tips to help you get your videos looking really good. So the one thing you wanna do is make sure that you check out your backgrounds. You wanna eliminate any kind of distractions. You know, we all, we're all filming in our homes or places like that and we need to do the best we can with what we've got. But just take a quick peek behind you and make sure, you know, you don't have like bright lights in the background or, you know, bookshelves behind your head that look make them look like they're, you know, coming out of your ears or something. So watch for that. Um, 
you know, I would also highly recommend, you know, making sure your hair looks good and for the ladies wear some makeup. If you feel good about yourself and you look good, you're just going to be more confident and you'll just be able to be more natural and connect with people. And, you know, make sure that you're you're dressed nicely. I've seen some videos recently where there's there was this guy and he actually had on only boxer shorts on the bottom and business attire on the top and he was having a meeting and he forgot and he got up and walked around and it was they were all laughing at him so you don't want that to happen that's kind of silly but again it just helps you feel better on camera when you're looking good and feeling good so that's all I wanted to share with you today and I hope you found this helpful and again I'm always here that um, you can ask questions or chat and um, we can talk more if you want to and hopefully I'll be back again soon with some more things to share. So bye for now.